You're listening to Graveyard Show Classic. 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 Podcast number 34, August 27th, 2009. I am Stacey Ponder of Final Girl, and you are... I have no idea who you are, but I do know that you are listening to The Graveyard Show. To the graveyard. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the guest of the evening. She is Stacy Ponder. She is the creator of Final Girl blog, as well as the writer uh, for AMCTV.com. And, well, we're going to talk about her latest film, which stars Vangori Spooks model Shannon Lark, friend of the show. Well, the film is called Ludlow. Get ready, folks. If you haven't heard about this one, you're going to have a good time listening to this interview. Stacy Ponder is here in the graveyard. Enjoy. Stacey Ponder is a writer and filmmaker, as well as a comic book inking artist. I'm sure many of you have either read her comic strip, The Sticks, or her blogs on amctv.com, or her awesome blog, finalgirl.blogspot.com, as well as articles for Room Work Magazine. Her film, Taste of Flesh, Taste of Fear, was an official selection of the 2008 Viscera Film Festival, and she just finished, notice how I didn't say completed, her film, right. Ludlow, <laughs> and we're going to get into that in just a few minutes. Stacy now joins me in the graveyard. Stacy, it's great to have you finally on the show. Thank you very much for having me. That, uh, that intro made me feel, I don't know, like I've done stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, say, I would say you've done quite a bit. I mean, uh, you, you, you certainly have a, a, an amazing resume. Um, let's, uh, let, let's start with, with one question that, that really I thought about a lot uh, leading into this interview. Would you consider yourself a writer first or a filmmaker first? Oh, man. Honestly, I'm having trouble thinking of myself as either one. Uh, people ask me what I do. People who don't know me ask me what I do, and I kind of stare at them <laughs> and say, well, I write some stuff. And Because it's, I, I just literally fell into both areas. Mm -hmm. I, just, I started my blog for something to do, and now it's kind of taken over my life. And I started making movies just because it would be fun, and now those are the two things I'm doing with my life, but I still don't feel comfortable telling people, yeah, I'm a writer, I'm a filmmaker, whatevs, you know. <laughs> so, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a writer who makes movies, I guess. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I like to make stuff. I just, that's, that's my standard. I don't know, I like to make stuff. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, I'd say. Um, I mean, you certainly have a lot that you've done, like I said. Um, and back when we met in person at uh, Fango in L.A., uh, we, um, we were talking about Viscera, and your film, as I mentioned at the top, Taste of Flesh, Taste of Fear, uh, was an official selection for Viscera. Uh, why don't you tell everybody what the film's about? Uh, Taste of Flesh, Taste of Fear is sort of your standard uh, lesbian vampire movie. Um, except that it's made with Barbie dolls. Uh, ah. <laughs> the entire cast is Barbies. Or actually, I can't, couldn't afford actual Barbies, so it's actually dollar store knockoff Barbies. I think they're called fashion dolls. Um, okay. But otherwise, it's, you know, it's a lesbian vampire movie. There's two women, and their car breaks down, and they go to the castle, and the woman who saves them happens to be a vampire, you know? Uh -huh. So lots of sensuality, okay. <laughs> as you can expect in a lesbian vampire movie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, now how, did you, how did you come up with the idea to do that? Um, actually, I had intended to film it uh, with real live people at one point, and then the actress who was going to play the vampire had to drop out 
maybe a week before we were going to start shooting. Okay. And for some reason, instead of just trying to find another actress, I thought, hey, why don't I just do it all by myself with dolls? That'll be easier. <laughs> 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 And in some regards it was, because I could kind of work around the clock, and I didn't have to feed anybody except myself, and yeah. and all that. But then, on the other hand, I had to build all the sets and do all the doll stuff, and so it was a little more time-consuming. I, I was going to yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, did you find that all of a sudden as you were doing it, you're going, uh-oh, this, is, this, is, this may be more time-consuming than I really, you know, expected? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Once I realized what it takes to actually build a set, Yep. You know, and, and not just, I mean, and I did it like the walls are just printed out, you know, pictures of texture that I just glued to a piece of cardboard and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I still needed to have a bed for someone to lay on and a table for them to eat their food and, you know, all this yeah. kind of stuff. And it just it was a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but it all paid off because it is right. a, 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 an official selection of the, of the 2008 Viscera Film Festival. Yeah. And I believe that the DVD is coming out in September. Am I? I believe so. Uh, okay, believe so, so if anybody wants to see the film, they can go and they can purchase the DVD of the, the Viscera Film Festival and they can see what it is that we're talking about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Now... Speaking of films, uh, I mentioned at the top uh, Ludlow. Uh, you shot uh, you shot it in the Mojave Desert. Yes. Uh, you shot this. Uh, you shot it back in June. Yep. And uh, the script was 20 pages originally, but the film ended up being just a little bit longer than that. Am just I? a little bit, you know, just like three times as long <laughs> as I thought it was going to be. No big deal, you know. <laughs> so I guess I guess the question is, what happened? Wow, what happened? There's a lot of uh, Shannon Lark staring at herself in the mirror, actually, in okay. the movie. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's a very sort of, I've learned to call it deliberately paced. Yep. Because I've been telling people, ah, my movie's so slow. And they're like, no, no, don't say slow. Say deliberately paced. Because I'm trying to sort of create atmosphere and, and you know, that sort of thing. So it's yeah. kind of a throwback to older movies. There's not, there's no jump cuts. There's no... Nothing fancy like that. Okay. It's more of a character study, I guess. Okay. And and um, and now you you um, as you, as you said, the, the film is uh, three times the length of the script. Uh, you are currently looking to make it a longer film now because of that, right? Yes. Yeah. It, it's it clocks in at about 63 minutes, which is kind of useless to me because it's far too long to be a short and it's not quite feature length. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of irritating, actually. <laughs> so rather than try to cut, you know, 45 minutes out of it, which just would be impossible, um, yep. I decided to just write some more scenes and shoot some more stuff. And how so, much longer are you looking at making it? Um, maybe 10 minutes. Okay. I don't think, I don't, I don't want to drag it out to 90. Sure, But I've got sure. the, I've written some stuff for it and we're going to be shooting that actually next week. Oh, great. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's coming up soon, but it's, you know, there's another, it's going to be an FX heavy sort of scene, so okay. it's going to be really exciting. Okay. Now, I know on your website on Final Girl, you were, uh, you, you were, uh, you posted a, an area for people to uh, donate movie, uh, to donate money for the film. Yeah. Uh, how has it been going? It's been going really well, actually. People are pretty awesome. <sighs> pretty awesome, because I don't... I don't usually ask my readers to give me money, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as much as I would like to buy, you know, whatever, video games or something, yeah. like, I like to earn my money, but for this, I just thought, I've seen other people do it, and, you know, it is going to cost money to finish the film, as, as low as the budget is, I do have to fly my actress out here and pay for the hotel room and all these other things, and I just don't have the money to do it right now, and mm -hmm. so I was like, you know, why not? Yeah, Ten dollar donation, you get your your name in the credits of the film. Nice. And people have been really, really awesome. That's great. Yeah, but yeah it's really kind of heartwarming to find kindness on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you mean unlike all of that negativity and anger that goes on on some exactly. of the forums and such? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. It can be uh, it can be a little daunting sometimes. It's just... depressing. Yeah. So this is sort of rekindled my love for humanity, I guess. And not just because I'm, like, getting money out of it, you know, yeah. but just that people are being really cool. Sure, definitely. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's... And spreading the word, which is really great, you know. Which so. is nice. 
Yeah. And we'll uh, we'll give all the listeners out there the web address at the end to uh, if if anybody's interested and they want to donate some some money to the film, we'll definitely get into that. So you chronicle the making of Ludlow on your blog, which is Final yeah. Girl. For those that yep. may not know it, uh, certainly one of the best uh, websites out there. I I, I, I love I love reading it. It it is great stuff. Thank um, you. And and we, uh, along with you chronicling the making of Ludlow, uh, Shannon Lark also added some comments uh, yeah. on each of the uh, six parts. Um, you start the uh, the uh, you start the commentary describing an agreement that you and Shannon made where she said that she wanted to be in one of your movies when, when yes. the two of you were at the Paranoia Film Festival here in, here in uh, Los Angeles. Why don't you tell everybody about that story, about how you guys came to this agreement? <laughs> uh, well, Shannon and I met uh, over email um, after she got in touch with me about Taste of Flesh, Taste of Fear. And so we had emailed back and forth, and then I found out she was going to be at the Paranoia Film Festival screening last year's Viscera Selections. Uh, so I went and we met and just kind of hit it off right away and just went in the bar and, and drank together for a good six hours. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> over the course of that, she told me that she wanted to be in one of my movies, and I was extremely flattered by that. Um, and then she was like, no, seriously. I'm, I'm, and she just busted out a napkin and started writing up a contract uh, that she would be in one of my movies not only would she be in one of my movies, but that she would make the experience enjoyable for all involved. <laughs> so <laughs> we signed it, and that was that. So it's, it's good, because I had a binding contract that yeah. she had to be in one of my movies. There you go. So, so and, yeah. And if anybody wants to see that, they can go to your, uh, your website, uh, Final Girl, and you have uh, a scan of that yes. uh, on there. So I now, still have it. <laughs> do, do you really? I do, actually. And then when we were shooting uh, this last film we made together, her film, Voyeur, uh, once again we kind of got drunk, and I ended up writing up a napkin contract stating that I would put Shannon Lark in every movie I ever make from now on, <laughs> forever, amen. <laughs> so I think I might have boxed myself into something with that. but <laughs> Yeah, that's quite a commitment, I have to say. I mean, yeah. every film. I, mean, yeah. I, know, I know like Scorsese and Coppola have had actors that have been in almost, if not all, every movie, but I mean, that's, that's, that's quite a bit to... It's a uh, tall order. It's a tall <laughs> order. But I figure I can get away with it by like, maybe I'll just have a picture of her in the background. There you, there you go. <laughs> you know, yeah. Or something yeah. like that. So. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't, you know, stipulate in what capacity I would put her in the film. You know, there, so. you, ah, there you go. You see? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now here you are. You're at the Paranoia Film Festival. You have an actress. You have no script. So how did you come about uh, with the idea of, of Ludlow? Wow. I don't, you know, it's, it's interesting because I immediately was extremely flattered that she wanted to work with me and all of this, but I wanted to, because she lives in another state. She lives in New Mexico. I live in Los Angeles. Um, so she would be coming back out here to shoot with me. I really wanted to make it worth her while and not just do something extremely goofy, which is pretty much everything I've done in the past. Um, <laughs> it's just silly sort of B-movie stuff. So I wanted to do something kind of good that she would feel it was worth her while, and I wanted to push myself as far as the content. I wanted to make a good horror movie. So I just started with that, really. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make something good. And then I thought about that. And then somehow the idea of a girl in a motel room in the desert came to me. I think that was kind of it. Mm -hmm. And that was all I had to go on. And then I just, it went from there. I started thinking about, um, there's a few movies that kind of influenced it as far as subject matter a little bit, which um, Bug, the William Friedkin film mm -hmm. with Ashley Judd and Harry Connick Jr. Um, and Repulsion. Like I like the idea of one person being isolated somewhere. Yeah and what happens to people when they're isolated. Um, maybe because I write and I'm kind of isolated all the time. <sighs> and I realize I'm, you know, I just shuffle out to get my mail once a day and like <laughs> scorn the sun and you know, it'd be really easy to just kind of go crazy. Um, so I just started throwing ideas at Shannon and it was literally, I was throwing sentence fragments at her. You know, I'd, yeah. I'd send her a text message and be like, oh, there's a girl in the desert. And she'd be like, all right, that sounds great. And I'd be like, yeah, and then she stabs something. Yeah, yeah see, that sounds great. <laughs> you know, so it just kind of went from there. 
Now, what's interesting is that you just mentioned going outside and being in the sun. You selected, I'm in a pretty remote area um, yeah. outside of Los Angeles. Was it one of those things that when you, maybe it was one of those things that sounded like a good idea at the time? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm a big fan of the desert. I just, I grew up on the East Coast, and being out here, it's just, geographically, it's just so different than the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And the desert is sort of this insane, harsh place that's probably the closest I'm ever going to get to living on Mars. Like, it just doesn't look like the United States. It doesn't look like anything mm -hmm. you could ever imagine. So I was really excited to shoot something in the desert. Um, so I just, I kind of got in my car one day and headed east out into the Mojave. And I knew that I needed a, a weird motel somewhere and a diner. And I just happened to take the exit in Ludlow and there was a motel and a diner and a gas station. And that was it. <laughs> that was Ludlow. So I was like, yes, this is the place. Wow. This is the place. And that then the title came from there. It was an untitled script at the time. and just all kind of fell into place so so now it comes time to shoot the film and and for those that may not have read your your blog on the making of this film there i think they're gonna be very entertained here <laughs> in a, yeah, in a little oh bit. God. um because i mean it, it, shooting in the desert's hard enough i mean being out in the sun and being out in the heat for those that may not have ever been out to Los Angeles or anywhere that where it's you know, extremely hot, Arizona, Texas. I mean, this is, I mean, it's dry, it's a dry, hot heat and it, yeah. it can be brutal. So, yeah. so you pick up Shannon here in LA and yep. you guys drive out to Ludlow. We, you get there and what happens? I get there and the hotel clerk, which is, I'm using that term very loosely. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> because the hotel doesn't actually have an office attached to it. You have to go to the gas station uh -huh. to sort of make your reservation and all of that. Uh, and I had found Ludlow maybe two weeks prior, gone out there. Yes, I'm going to reserve it for these dates. Super. Sounds great. See you then. Uh, we're all gung-ho. We've got the equipment packed. We're ready to start shooting. We get to the gas station, and I say, hi, I've got a reservation. And she goes in the back and comes out and says, we don't have a reservation for you. And we're all full up. The motel was full. I, I, I can't imagine who would willingly stay at this place. Because uh, it is literally, I mean, if you look at a map, yeah. it's just sort of a giant gray area, and then there's Ludlow right in the middle. Like, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. So she was like, yeah, I'm sorry. You're going to have to come back tomorrow. So we kind of... <laughs> I didn't know oh what to gosh. do. I didn't know what to do. And it was the same clerk who had taken my reservation. And so I told her, you know, I remember you. <laughs> you <laughs> wrote my name down on a cash register receipt. And maybe I should have been wary of that. And, yeah. You know, you, you just kind of pulled a piece of paper out of the register and wrote my name down instead of actually writing it in a book or something. But I remember you. You took my name. And she <laughs> copped to it. She admitted it was her error. And there was a warm diet iced tea sitting on the counter. And she offered us that in lieu of a hotel room, oh. which was, yeah, that was very, <laughs> very nice of her. Uh, so we were kind of screwed, oh my basically. Gosh. Um, so what did you wind up doing now? You, you have no location for your film. I mean, you don't have right, to do no it. location for the film. So what do you And Shannon was leaving in four days. So we had four days to shoot this thing, and I just wanted to get it done. Oh, my God. Going back to Los Angeles would have been pointless because it just shooting here it's just not the same I mean it's Los Angeles it's not the middle of nowhere yep um, so we kind of got out the road atlas and took a look at it and uh, we figured that Baker was close by and maybe they'd have a hotel that would work just as well and we could try it and then at least if they did then we could start shooting there and just say screw Ludlow mm -hmm. or we could just come back to Ludlow the next day so we headed off to Baker which was across the Mojave National Preserve, uh, a good hour away from Ludlow, Ugh. and looked for another hotel room. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Now, we found one, and it just wasn't workable. Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna really. say. Now, was that, was that the Wills Fargo that you went to? That was the Wills Fargo, yes. Our, our choices were uh, the Wills Fargo Motel, which I don't understand at all, and the Bun Boy, 
which I really wanted to say in the bun boy, but Shannon was a little too wary of it. <laughs> oh, my god. So gosh. we stayed at the Wills Fargo, and it was just horrible. It was just... It, it just was awful. It was There were white linoleum floors and white walls, and it was just... It was hard enough to just sleep there, never mind trying to film a movie there. Uh, so, now, yeah. did you... Um, at one point, you guys went out and shot in the desert, right? Is that day two? Um, we did a little bit on... Gosh, was that day two? Was day we two did a day little one. bit on day one oh, after yeah. we learned we weren't going to be staying in Ludlow. Yep. We did some exterior stuff. And um, there's some driving. She does all the, there's a, you know, it starts with the driving uh-huh. scene and, and things like that. So, so you're trying to just, like, just like, yeah, you're trying to, yeah, get, you're trying like, to get like what you can what you at this can. point. Yeah, your, your exactly. Your set is gone. You don't have a location. You're just trying to make up what you can. And yeah. am I, am I correct that the camera battery died? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was ridiculous. Yeah, I found this. It was in the middle of the Mojave National Preserve. There was this great scenery, these strange-looking rockish hills and Joshua trees and all this other stuff. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to get out, and you're going to you're gonna walk, and then you're going to find this thing in the dirt, and it's going to be awesome. So we walk for probably 15 minutes out to get to where I want to go. We get out there, and... Oh, God, God, the first time we got out there and I forgot the thing that she's supposed to find on the ground. I had left it in the car. So I had to go all the way back to the car, and on the way back to the car, I walked into a cactus. And so I spent, like, (laughs) and those things hurt. Uh, Who knew that those actually hurt? And they're barbed, and they stick in you. Like, uh, I had no idea. And and Shannon, and I'm sorry, but Shannon thought that you actually stopped. (laughs) Stop she thought feet. I was like going to the bathroom or yeah. something. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> I was bent over picking cactus out of my leg yeah, for yeah. 15 minutes. Uh, and she had no idea what was going on. So she thought that I was going to the bathroom. So she decided to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so it's like we're in the middle of nowhere and she's peeing and I'm pulling cactus out of my leg. And then I finally get to the car and then I finally get all the way back to her. It's been like a half an hour at this point. Uh, and I say, okay, go. And I turn the camera on and the battery dies. And the battery was back in the car. So I was like, you know. Oh, my gosh. This is just not meant to be today. Uh, it's one of those days. I, 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 uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was not the best way to start the, uh, the shoot. So. I, can, I can laugh, too, because I've been in, in on shoots like that, doing my own stuff way back when. It's just like, uh, you, you just, you, you go into it with good intentions, and you're like, okay, we're ready to go. And, you know, it's a small group of people. In your case, well, in your case, it's just the two of you. Yeah. Um, and it's like, you know, you're like, all right, let's do this. And then all of a sudden, just everything just starts falling apart. Yeah, there weren't really a lot of variables. You know, it's not like I was orchestrating some sort of final destination-esque car crash sequence. Yeah. It was like, you're going to walk from there to there, and I'm going to film you do it. <laughs> and, like, we just couldn't make that happen that day, you know? Oh so gosh. it was a little discouraging. Now, getting back to Wills Fargo, was that the location <laughs> where you had the locust issue? Yes! Oh my God! I don't, I don't. I gotta do some internet research or something. <laughs> we we ended up in Baker, uh-huh. and there's nothing to do in Baker, surprisingly enough. Yeah. Um, so we decided to go to the. We wanted some food and some beer, so we leave the hotel room. It's after dark, and it was like I don't know which plague it is, which number plague it is, but it was like that in the Bible. <laughs> yep. There were locusts. I mean, it was so, they were flying into us, and you couldn't walk without stepping on them, and it was just, there were clouds of them around the streetlights and everywhere. It was, in, I've never seen anything like it, and I have no idea if it's always like that. I mean, it must be. I don't know how anybody could live there, wow. because there were so, I mean, it was, it was like the mist, uh. except like the miniature version. <laughs> like, if I was only three apples high, it would have been yeah. just like I was in the mist. <laughs> Oh my it was gosh. insane. It was insane. The next day, the ground was just littered with dead locusts. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you, so now you deal with the camera battery, killer cactus, locusts. <laughs> you know, you, you just you, all you're trying to do is just shoot this movie. So. I just make a movie. Yeah. So yeah. you know, it's not you know, you're not asking for much. So do you go, you go back right to. Yeah. Ludlow. Yeah, Baker was was unusable, so we decided to go back to Ludlow the next day. And you get you get the hotel. We get the, we they did have the room for okay. us. Okay, and that was good. We check into the room. Yep. We're ready to go. It's yep. like eleven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we're we're a day behind, but it's cool, and we're so fast, and so we shoot maybe two scenes. 
uh, about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We go to take a break. I go across the street to the gas station to get some water. I come back, and Shannon says, I think the power went out while you were gone. I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. Yes, indeed, the power went out at 1 o'clock in the afternoon uh. and did not come back on all day. And no one seemed overly concerned about it except us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went back after it got to be... An hour later, I went over to the gas station. I said, you know, the, the power is off at the motel over there. And they said, yes, it is. <laughs> okay. I was like, I, you know, did you call anybody? Did you? No, there's really no one to call. There's, you know, maybe, maybe there's a line came down somewhere or somebody crashed into something or who knows. Out in the middle of nowhere. Out in the middle of nowhere. So they were fine with the power being out. And they weren't going to refund my money. They weren't going. They said if we wanted to leave, they would give me my money back. Wow. But if I was, yeah. So we kind of just sat there. And we kept waiting for the power to come back on and waiting and waiting and waiting. We went to the diner next door and had food for three hours. Waiting and waiting. And the power just never came back on. So we wow. lost day two. Because so, we just couldn't film at all. So now you're yeah. halfway into your shooting schedule. <laughs> You've gotten little yeah. to nothing done. Yeah. I mean, at this point, Stacy, you just had to have been thinking to yourself, this is not going to happen. What kept yeah, you was... from just packing it up and just saying, forget it? <laughs> I was bound and determined to make it happen. Yeah. Uh, at one point, Shannon and I were, we filmed ourselves for this sort of, I don't know, just sort of silly behind the scenes kind of video blog thing that probably no one will ever see except us. <laughs> But we're sitting on the bed, and the power's out, and the sun's going down, and she says, you know, I can always come back. And I, and I just said, no, like, no, it's going to happen. We're going to make it happen. I didn't want her to come back. Because I've, I've seen it too many times where movies end up taking five years to make a 20-minute movie uh -huh. because of circumstances. And so I just wanted to try as best as we could to get it done. So, but we lost two days, and then that night... I went to bed around, I don't know, midnight or one or something, and I decided that if the power was not on the next day when we woke up, we would either go back to Baker and just try the bun boy, <laughs> see, if, <laughs> see if we could shoot at the bun boy, or we would head south and go to maybe Joshua Tree and see if there was a hotel there we could use. Um, but we woke up the next morning and the power was on, so finally it was meant to happen. And you got... 15 scenes done on day three, which is a whole lot. Of, I mean, that's a lot of scenes to get. I mean, how fast were you, were you, were the two of you moving to get this going? We were moving really quickly. Um, we don't mess around really once we're going. And I have a really good idea of what I want in my head. You know, I have it all storyboarded out and written out and all of this. So there's not a lot of me standing there trying to figure out how I want to stage the scene. Um, and I don't really shoot anything I don't need. So it'll be very much like, okay, this is just going to be a quick shot of you walking from there to there. And the actor might feel a little weird about it, but I've got it all edited in my head already. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't need tons of coverage and all of that. Um, so we just, and Shannon is such a hard worker and she is ready to go. And so we just did it. We just started blazing through it really quickly. Wow. I mean, it's, that's one of those things where you're like, I, 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 well, I can't imagine, but it, for those that have not made a, a, a film or maybe, you know, college students out there that are looking or high school students that are looking to get into this, I mean, it's, it, you think that it's easy to make a film. It's just like, okay, well, we'll turn the camera around and we'll shoot it. But it's, it's the little things sometimes that really, well, as we found out with the camera batteries and just, the, you know, the <laughs> set, although the set really isn't a little thing, but a, a reservation, you know, it's like all these things yeah. get in your way. Um, did you ever find that um, not having a script supervisor, and I know, you know, that, you know, this may be getting a little too technical, but I mean, not having a script supervisor or a continuity person there, did you ever find yourself going, oh my gosh, did, did we get, you know, am I accurate here? Did that ever concern you? Or are you just like, you know, I'm just going to do this, and however it is, it is. Um, I felt pretty, even after watching the footage after I came back, I feel pretty good about it, even at the time, just because I do have it so mapped out yeah. and written out and drawn out and all of this that I know that if I can at least get those shots, I should be good. Yeah. Um, and we both kept an eye on continuity um, and things like that. And it was nice because 
I was the only crew member. It was just me and the camera and the light. Yeah. So I was able, instead of telling someone else where to put the light, I could just do it and get yeah. it over with and, and all of that. Yeah. So, but I did a lot of um, rewriting on the fly. Um, if a scene didn't work or, like, the end of the film ended up, um, she, her character has a monologue at the end, and the way she had been playing the character, the monologue no longer made sense, what I had written. So I just rewrote it and handed it to her. And she's and Shannon's such a pro that she just like went with whatever I threw at her. Yeah. She was ready to go. Yeah. How how was it working with Shannon? I mean, I've I've met Shannon obviously with with the two of you at Fango. Shannon was on the show a few months ago. Uh, she's amazing. Um, she really is. As an actress, I because I, I you know I've I've seen the trailer and I have to say that the, the film does look very intense. Um, yeah. What what was it like you know working with Shannon? Uh, it was kind of amazing, actually. Um, I had an inkling she was good, but I don't think I really knew how good until we started rolling. Mm -hmm. And for me, there was no sort of easing into this working relationship. We just kind of clicked right away and just went with it. And I think we're both really on the same wavelength. Uh -huh. And so she was game to try anything. Anything I threw at her, she was ready to go. She never... She worked... She's the hardest working person I think I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and this movie really takes her all over the place. Like, she actually has to act. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which yeah. is, sometimes in the really low-budget indie stuff, there's not a lot of... You might have to scream or yeah. something, but there's yeah. not a lot of character development. And this, is, this movie is all character development for her. It's... The, the camera is pointed at Shannon Lark for mm -hmm. essentially an hour. Yeah. And she really, really carries it. She, the girl, she can act. She really can act, and I hope that people see this yeah. so that they can see what she can do. Yeah, because, I mean, I know, you know, most people out there know her from, you know, obviously being the Fangoria Spooks model. Yeah. Um, I'm sure, you know, some of the listeners out there have met her at, at the conventions. They've seen her. Um, uh I have to say, and I, and I don't know Shannon. I've only interviewed her and just, you know, spoke with her briefly. When I saw the trailer, I was like, wow. She yeah. looks different. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it, it looks like it's going to be a really tour de force acting performance on her part. I mean. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. This may take her into a whole nother area. I hope it does. I really hope it does because she is capable and talented enough, I think. And I hope that people don't underestimate what she can do because she's the spooks model. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I think there are certain expectations and connotations with that sort of title. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I don't even like labeling her as a scream queen. Like, I have problems with that term anyway, but um, you know, she's so much more than that. Yeah, that actually, you know what, that's interesting because I wanted to ask you about this, and while we're on the subject now, why don't we just kind of take a segue from, from Ludlow into this. Um, you know, I've, I've interviewed several women now on the show, and, and I always like to get um, a female perspective on where they feel women are right now in the horror community. You're obviously, you know, you're very well respected. You work a lot. Um, where do you see women right now in horror? Oh. Well, I think it's getting a little better uh -huh. for women. Um, you look at some of the most well-respected websites on the internet, stuff like Pretty Scary is um, headed up by Heidi Martin Itzy, a mm -hmm. woman. Rue Morgue, Yovanka is just amazing, and I don't think anybody thinks of her as any less than amazing as far as her knowledge and, and all of that. You know, she's not, well, she's a girl, so, you know, she's she's right up there with the big boys. Mm -hmm. um, I just think we need more filmmakers. Why do you we need think, more women behind the camera. Yeah, why do you think that is? I mean, obviously, I know when, when it, certainly in the mainstream, you can say, well, it's an all-boys all club. Okay, yeah. fine. But why do you think it is, though, that it's it, women, there still isn't a large group of women filmmakers in general, let alone even in the horror genre. God, it's... That's a question I ask myself all the time. And when I was working in comic books, I asked myself that as well, because there are very few female comic book artists. And it comes down to, well, are the women not getting hired because they're women, or they're not good enough, or are women just not 
trying to make a go of that career. You know, I, I don't know if women would rather be in front of the camera than behind the camera. Sometimes that's the case. They want to be actresses, but they have no interest in, in telling stories. Um, in the low-budget world, there are, there's a few women filmmakers that are out there, but occasionally they just make one or two movies and then they vanish. Mm -hmm. You know, and I really don't know. It's really, it's, it's hard to make movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that really that it is. Movies. Yeah, but somehow, so, you know, somehow though, I you know, I look at, I look at yourself. I look at Heidi, Shannon, Raina Young, um, Elska McCain, um, Donna Davies, and and I see women who are driven and aren't going to let these obstacles get in their way. I mean, you you, which we'll talk about a little bit in a little bit. Um, your uh, your film that you did, uh, you made it for 49 cents, I read somewhere. <laughs> oh, God. That's pretty much my budget. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, you're, you're getting it done. I mean, Shannon started the Viscera Film Festival. Rain is doing this huge documentary on, on uh, women in horror. So, I mean, do you think that maybe there might be more kind of going on underneath the surface that eventually there might be this explosion of, of women filmmakers suddenly just like here we are and I think so I hope so I think women as even in just as audience members uh, for horror films the number of women going to see them I think is still on the rise mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's been thought that girls don't like horror and it's like actually yeah we do <laughs> you know we like horror movies just as much as the guys do mm -hmm. Um, so I think the more women that are in the audience, uh, hopefully there's going to be a few of them that say, hey, I can do that, yeah. or I want to do that. You know, and that's what's so great about what Shannon is doing, is getting, you know, getting women to do it, just to put the call out and say, hey, you know, pick up a camera and make a movie. And it's, it might stink, but you've made a movie, and then you'll make another one that's going to be better. Yeah. You know? It's all about the so learning I process. Exactly. I have to tell you, when, when I had Shannon on the show back in March, um, she blew me away. I mean, it, it, you know, with, with the interview as, as a whole, but there was one sequence that she had uh, talked about um, being a filmmaker. And uh, this is something that I would play for any college student, any high school student that's looking to get in the industry. She talks about how it doesn't matter who you are. You need to get your basically get your hands dirty, get in there, do the job, do any job, yeah. learn what the job is, what other people do, and you know don't let your ego get in the way because yeah. everybody's there to make a movie together. And I was like, wow, you know, yeah, it, it's it's amazing. She's right? Yeah. I mean, that's part of the reason why she and I work so well together. I think is because there's no ego involved at all. Um, it's just about the finished product and whatever we need to do to get the finished product. I mean, she was excited to kind of look like this movie, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. she does have the reputation as like, oh, she's, you know, you know, the pinup girl type or whatever, but that's, she's not about that. Like she uses that to her advantage, but yeah. she's not about that. Um, and so she was excited to kind of get dirtier and dirtier as the shoot went on and mm -hmm. she's throwing up and she's drunk and she's this and that and the other thing and she was like great you made me look like hell it's awesome <laughs> well I'll tell you the photos of her on the website I mean I was like wow <laughs> wow yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's pretty uh, it's, yeah it is I mean she definitely uh, she definitely looks different in this film and yeah. uh, for those that haven't seen it yet, it's on it's uh, online. You can definitely check it out. Uh, the trailer yeah. film. Now, speaking of getting the finished product, day four comes. You have a whole lot of work to do. How yeah. how long of a day did you uh, did you shoot? Uh, the fourth and final day was about twenty two hours. Mm. Um, the third day was about oh gosh, probably a good seventeen hours. Yeah. Um, I was up until about two, I think, and then I was up again at seven, and then we just kind of we were shooting again before nine. We had already shot at least one scene. Yeah. Um, and we just kept going, and then it became just a mission. Like we have to finish this. You know, yeah. I didn't want it to be time to leave, and we still had two scenes left to do. Yep. You know, once it became something that we could finish, we just made it a point to finish. So we finally finished at about six thirty in the morning and just immediately packed up and left because she had to get on a plane in Los Angeles at 3. Oh. So. 
It was a little bit insane. It was a little bit insane. And we were both a little punch drunk by the end of it, but... Yeah. I was going to say, how did you even make it home on the ride back to L.A.? <laughs> I know, and then I had to drive for two and a half hours, and... It was a lot of coffee. Yeah. A lot of coffee. <laughs> and I, then I just hit that sweet spot where I was just kind of zoning. I was still awake, but I yeah. was kind of zoning out. Oh, yeah. My brain was just shutting down, so. Uh, that's, yeah, it's not a fun feeling. Yeah. Uh, but, that's, see, that's, but that's fine. Like, she was fine with that. She never said, you know, oh, I need to, I need to take a nap or we need to stop now. Or, and, I mean, it was extreme circumstances. Yeah. But, you know, we just, just did it. We just did it. And you got the movie so. done. We got the movie all, done. Well, almost done. <laughs> almost done. We thought it was done, but we should have known better, I suppose, that Ludlow would drag us back again. <laughs> <laughs> See, so. just when you thought you were out, it pulled you back in. Exactly. <laughs> I'd do my bad Al Pacino yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, you called Ludlow your anti Ghostella movie. Yes. Now, for those that haven't seen Ghostella or don't know what Ghostella was, why don't you give them a, a description of what it was? Uh, okay. Um, Ghost Tour was sort of... Well, there's a website I had done some writing for called After Ellen. And they put out a call looking for a new web series. Um, and their only stipulation... you had To enter the contest, you had to have three complete episodes uh, in the can. And there had to be some sort of gay content to it. It's a gay website. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well... I can do that. I can make something. That's fine. Uh, so I came up with this idea of sort of a bargain basement public access Elvira, uh, who is Ghostula, and she hosts her show, Ghostula's Haunted Tomb, out of her garage, and she's a really, really bad horror host. Um, she's an Elvira wannabe, but she's just really inept. And I figured if the show was Ghostula's Haunted Tomb, that would allow me to make a complete short film for each episode of the show because she would be presenting this film so then it would be the segments with Ghostula and then a complete horror film and that would be it and so I made three episodes and entered it and I was crowned runner-up because uh, it was a little a little quirky for the website yeah. <laughs> <laughs> horror movies you know that's yeah. how it goes yeah uh, but I was crowned runner-up and so they asked me to make a complete season which was 10 episodes so each and, episode has a, a short horror film in it. And, you, I mean, you made the series for practically nothing, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was basically, I would come up with the idea and then figure out how I could make it with crap I could buy at the Halloween shop, basically. Mm -hmm. And it was good because they're all supposed to be really bad movies, like B-movies. Yep. So I didn't have to worry about the, the, the cut-off hand looking fake. I was yeah. like, well, yeah, it's a B-movie. It's going to look fake. <laughs> so I'll just go to Halloween Town and buy it, you know? Yep. So, now, Ghost yeah, it was just me and my friends being really silly and just having a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, Ghostella was Heidi Martinuzzi, right? Yes. And yes. How, how was she? How was she to work with? She's great. Heidi is extremely professional. Um, she wants to get it right, even if it's Ghostella, and she will. You know, it takes her a while to kind of get warmed up, and Ghostella is so goofy. Uh, but she'll keep working until she gets it right, and she's so funny. She's just, so, she's one of the funniest people I know, and she just really nailed it every single time. And so at this point, I can't imagine anyone else playing Ghost of And she just, she's another one who doesn't care how she looks. Yeah. You know, she's, she's fine with looking ridiculous on camera. Uh -huh. she, she'll go there and do it. So. No, I saw the one episode, uh, The Devil's Bum Bag, was that... <laughs> yeah. Like it, yeah, and yeah. I got to tell you, it it was so enjoyable it, from from the <laughs> beginning to end. It it was. I mean, Heidi as Ghostella is hilarious as she she's getting the phone call and her girlfriend's breaking up with her as she's doing the show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's hilarious. <laughs> and and then she doubles as one of the uh, one of the characters in the, in the short. Yeah. Um, why don't you tell everybody what the Devil's Bum Bag is about? Uh, the Devil's Bum Bag. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, my approach with this was because I wanted it, even though it was for a gay website, I wanted it to be palatable to all audiences. And so to me, it was kind of like, well, why don't I just make a horror movie and then I'll just make somebody gay? And that'll be that. There's my gay content. Yeah. Fine. This person's gay. And that's that. And that way no one is excluded from enjoying it uh -huh. or, or anything like that. Um, 
but the devil's bum bag was one of the earlier episodes um, where uh, it's Heidi's birthday. She plays a character named Simon, I think, <laughs> which is just <laughs> weird. Uh, and her girlfriend wants to get her a great birthday present. And for some reason, there's a witch having a yard sale outside, um, <laughs> which I don't know why I decided to do that. But there's a witch having a yard sale, and the girlfriend spots this fanny pack, or as they're called in Britain, the bum bag, uh, and it has, like, a skull painted on it. And she thinks this would make a great present for her girlfriend, but the witch tells her that it's cursed and she can't have it. So, of course, she steals it. She gives it to her girlfriend, who is really excited to get a fanny pack for her birthday. Uh, and she immediately puts it on, and sure enough, it is cursed, and she kills all of her friends. Yeah. And so the girlfriend has to go find the witch and lift the curse, and which is essentially all you have to do to break the curse is take off the fanny yeah. pack. Like, it's actually pretty easily solved. Well, just take it off. Uh, and that's about it. So It's great. It's I great. love that. She, she's, what did she say? You, you have to cut it off with a special blade? And, and, yeah, the, da- I mean, the dagger the dagger of the damned or yeah, something like that. Yeah, I oh. mean, it's just... It, I have to tell you, I mean... It, all the listeners out there, you have to find this online. I know, I think it's on Heidi's website, and I'm sure Stacy, yeah. you probably have a post somewhere. It's great. Definitely check it out. It, it's it's a blast. It's uh, pretty. There's so much fun to make because we're just being goofy the entire time. And it comes so. across as being fun, and that's that's why you know it kind of reminds me. It kind of reminded me of watching Tales from the Dark Side. Mm. You know, like wow. the like the B version of Tales from the Dark Side. Like it was, yeah. just, it was great. It was just so much fun because it's like, you know, as soon as you, as soon as you're, as soon as you, you know, start watching it, it's like you, you're right into it and you're having, and it's just a blast. Now, oh, that's awesome. have you thought about uh, revisiting Ghostella, uh, Ghostella at all or? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. People actually ask about it. Um, and I would love to, I kind of, I, I, I did an unofficial Ghostella movie recently, uh, which is actually, I call it a trailer, but it's 10 minutes long. Um, <laughs> it's a long trailer. So it's, it's essentially a short film. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's a trailer for a fictional horror film called Deadly Dress 4, Never a Bride. Um, and it's about a cursed bridal gown. And it's got all of my Ghostola, you know, <laughs> cast members in uh, there. But it's, the only difference is it's not introduced by Ghostola. Okay. But it's the same kind of ridiculousness. Um, but I would definitely like to do a season two. Definitely, because those are just so much fun to write oh, and make. Man. It's just the, us being silly in my backyard at three in the morning. Yeah, in bald caps. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, see, now you have now you have your next project after Ludlow is completed. <laughs> right. Goes to the season two. There you Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Now you yeah, said. I mean, I got um, the season finale had uh, Lena Headey in it, who people may know from she was in 300 uh-huh. um, and she was on the Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles recently, and all of this. And I'm like. You're willing to roll around on the ground for Ghost Alone? Like, that's wow. pretty cool. <laughs> how, did, how did you get her to do it? Um, I met her at a party at Comic-Con last year. Okay. And we just hit it off really well and just spent the night talking and became friends. And then I was like, hey, you want to do this? And she read it and thought it was hilarious. And so she did it. That is great. <laughs> Yeah. That is awesome. So she's she's another one who's willing to be goofy for me. So <laughs> it's, i got to take advantage of that. So. You have a talent, Stacey. You can get people to be goofy <laughs> in your movies. <laughs> people tell me that a lot, actually. They're like, Stacey, I don't know what it is, but I just, I'm, I'm free to be, well, I hate to say it, but I'm free to be retarded around you. Like, I just bring that out in people. So I don't know if that's a compliment or... <laughs> Or not, but <laughs> now you said in your blog that uh, one of one of the one of the positives that came out of it is that you you were able to get a, a recipe for fake blood. What is it? Oh yeah, fake blood. The the secret to fake blood is adding cocoa powder. Oh, that's the top secret. Yeah. I did not. A know little cornstarch, a little Cairo syrup. Yeah. Make sure it's not just red dye. You have to add blue or green in there to darken it up. Okay. Because that's the problem with fake blood is that it ends up being too red looking. Yeah. Uh, so you gotta darken it up some, and you can use that. You can do that by adding cocoa powder. Wow. It gives it a little bit of texture and it darkens it up. And there you go, everybody. You just learned right. something new. 
See, I remember when Go I Go make did, your own 49 cent movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, shoot, it, that's a whole lot better than when I did. When I made my horror movie way back when in the old days, um, I did a black and white film and I used, <laughs> I remember reading that Romero used ch chocolate syrup in Night of the Living Dead, so guess what I went out and did? <laughs> Oh, nice. Chocolate syrup everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the folks love that one. <sighs> I tell you. Well, you'd mentioned Comic-Con 08. Um, uh, Comic-Con 09, obviously, here in San Diego. You went down there for that. Um, yeah. It was very interesting reading um, your uh, your summary of what you did <laughs> down in Comic-Con this year. <laughs> is, no, I ate gelato, and that was about all I did. I, I was going to say, you ate a lot of gelato, you attended no panels, you went to no parties, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you watched your yeah, friends, get, your married. friends get, married. get married. I watched my friends get married on Sunday afternoon after the show, um, and that was really the reason why I went. It was just... I don't know, Comic-Con is so overwhelming, you know, it's yeah. just so many people, and I'm really not into being touched by strangers, mm -hmm. or like, touching strangers, and you can't help it but touch a lot of people when you're at Comic-Con, Yeah. so I wasn't looking forward to that, and there was just really nothing going on I wanted to see or do, so I just kind of hung out and ate gelato, and then Sunday they got married. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay, now the important, the important question the important is, question what is, kind of gelato, gelato did you have? Did you have? Mint chocolate chip. Okay. Mint chocolate, that's, that's the stuff. Mint chocolate chip is about as good as it gets for me. So, <laughs> although I did go to one place. I did have gelato at several places. I tried to sample San Diego's finest. And I went one place that didn't have mint chocolate chip, uh, so I had to have Nutella. Okay. Oh, so that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. yeah, I can, so, I can imagine. I, can I do not I dare, dare have, <laughs> have that. <laughs> Forget yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, so, but, I mean, when I came home and reflected on my five days in San Diego, I was like, wow, I really didn't do anything, did I? It was like being on an airplane for five days, where you don't really know where the time goes. Like, eight hours has just passed, and I have no idea what I did with myself. Yeah. It was kind of like that. Uh, so. Yeah, I can only imagine. Can I've only never imagine. been to Comic-Con. I just, I can't even imagine. It's just. Yeah. A sea of people, and I know that uh, also this year uh, Del Mar Racetrack opened, so they had horse racing on that Wednesday, and oh. then you have Comic Con on Thursday. So, yeah. you know, I, I was saying on one of my podcasts, I, I was I had this image of you know people at the horse race uh, the, at the horse races, you know, sitting there and enjoying the day, and all of a sudden this dark cloud of Comic -Con, Comic Con comes rolling <laughs> yeah. in. All of a sudden, a thousand stormtroopers walk <laughs> exactly, by. Exactly, yeah, and you know. <laughs> All the racing fans just run for their lives. Yeah, oh, my word. They're all fancy. <laughs> exactly. And passing out. Exactly. Mint juleps <laughs> crashing to the ground. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can't, I can't even imagine the, the yeah. insanity that is Comic Con, but I guess one day I'll, I'll have to go down and find out for myself. It's worth experiencing for yourself one time. Yeah. And some people thrive on it, some people look forward to it. I just, it's just too crowded for me. When yeah. I can't even see what, what's going on, and all you can do is like, very slowly shuffle from one end of the convention hall to the other. Uh, That's just, you know, I can do that at home. Uh, well, that's one of the reasons why I, when I went to, to Fango, I, I went, you know, on a Friday afternoon, there was nobody there. And I was, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, this is awesome. Because yeah. there's nobody there, you know, I can walk around and I don't have to like, you know, like Comic-Con, I don't have to worry about shuffling between people and having, I just, yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. I just don't, I, I Maybe I'm just getting old. I just don't have the patience for that anymore. Just, yeah, you know. I don't have the patience for it, and I just don't like other people on me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? yeah. I mean, I know if you, you mean. draw a circle around yourself with a radius of maybe 10 feet, yeah. and then imagine 35 people standing in that circle with you, <laughs> like that's Comic-Con. <laughs> you know, that's, that's Comic-Con for you. I've changed my mind. I'm not even uh, going down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then you get to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars to just be there, basically, yeah. and experience. That, fun, so. fun. Yeah. Fun, fun. Now, on your blog, you've uh, made it no secret that you are a big fan of, of the film Friday the 13th Part 2. I am. Why is that? I am. I think it is... I think it's a fine example of a slasher movie. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's uh, written off because it's a Friday the 13th. And yes, you don't go into Friday the 13th expecting lots of you know, philosophical insights and character development. Um, but I think it's it's pretty damn scary after all this time. Um, I like the idea of a weirdo with a bag on his head living in the woods, mm -hmm. killing people. 
I mean, I don't actually like that idea. That happening in his life would be pretty horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in the fictional sense, I think it's pretty sweet. Um, so I think it's actually pretty scary, and I think Amy Steele is a great final girl. Mm-hmm. Um, I think her character is actually one of the final girls who's overlooked. Everybody thinks Jamie Lee Curtis or yeah. Heather Langenkamp in Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. No one thinks about Ginny. Yeah, you know, that is interesting. And I think she kind of gets lost just in general, because, I mean, with uh, April Fool's Day, yeah, you know, again, she's in that position, and she she's so good. She's really good. And she just comes across as sort of smart mm-hmm. and mature, and maybe that's why people... She doesn't come across as, like, the typical camp counselor type. You know, she's it's, it's like she's got some years on her, even though she's young. And she's smart, and she is interesting and talks about things and she outsmarts Jason. Yeah. You know, which no one really does. Yeah, and it is Jason pre hockey mask as well, as you mentioned. Yeah. yeah I mean it yeah, I, I do I, I actually do like uh, part two. I, I like most of them. I mean the later ones kinda start to, you know, but what are you gonna do when But it was it was Jason sort of at his most if he can be realistic at all mm-hmm. at all, yeah. that was him at his most realistic. Like he built a little house for himself. Yeah. You know, he had a house with a toilet and a door, (laughs) you know, and he made a little shrine to his mom and he lit the candles. And somehow at the beginning of the film, he tracked down Alice and figured out where she lived and he went to her house to kill her. Yeah. And then he went back to the woods, you know, like he was a regular guy, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Pre, um... Super nat, um, I guess super, super zombie. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where it's like you chop off his head and he puts it back on and he comes after you again. It's like yeah, but like where does he spend all of his time in part four when he's not killing people? What's yeah. he doing? You know, at least in part two, you know, he's relaxing in his lean to, <laughs> staring at mom. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> so I like that. It's a nice touch. Yes, yes, it does. It does humanize him. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, now there are a couple of photos on your um, on your website, uh, Final Girl. Now I, this is just something that I that I just came across. I mean, I mean, just looking at it, uh, you have a few photos of the film The Descent. On yeah. There. And that is one of my favorite horror movies. I'd have to say I, I haven't really thought about it as a, like all time, but certainly you know the last ten years, twenty years, it, it was just a, a fantastic film. Uh, I was curious your thoughts on the movie. I I agree, absolutely. Absolutely. I managed to... It was one of those films that I kind of read about it because it it was released overseas before it came here. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of read about it, but I only read so much that I knew it would be good. Mm -hmm. I didn't read any plot spoilers. All I knew is some people went into a cave and bad stuff happened. Yeah. And that was it. I didn't want to look at any pictures or watch any trailers or anything. And so, you know, it got a theatrical release, and I went to see it one fine afternoon, and I was kind of blown away by it. Uh, it was scary. It was really scary. I, lo- I thought the acting was stellar. Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked all the characters. It was well-written. I liked the fact that it was all- just about all women. Yeah. Um, and I liked the fact that really nothing happens for about 45 minutes in that movie. It's all building tension and atmosphere and all of that, which it didn't just sort of jump right in with, there's monsters and they're killing people, and, you know, it took its time to get going, which really appealed to me. And, so. the, and the ending is certainly nothing yeah. cheerful. I mean... Right, yeah. No matter which ending you saw, it's, yeah. it's a pretty bad ending. Yeah, I mean, it really does get you. Um, uh, what do you think about... Uh, the sequel coming out I've kind of been ignoring it um, because I would like it to be good Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to go again with the there's so much overkill on the internet these days no uh, you know, there's, no <laughs> I know newsflash um, <laughs> but there's just so much set visits and up to the minute reporting and, and shots and trailers and scenes and interviews and all this stuff that the more I want to see something, the less I read about it and yeah. pay attention to it before I get to see it. So I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm pretending that I'm not looking forward to mm-hmm. it because I don't want to be disappointed because I think it's kind of an unnecessary sequel. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it was a good story that was very 
self-contained and could have just ended where it ended. Yeah, yeah, so. I agree. I, I think my big my big concern with this move, well, there are a couple concerns. One is how do you, I mean, doing what they're doing, and I'm not, I don't want to ruin it for anybody who hasn't seen the original yet, but I don't know how they're really going to do what they do. Yeah. Get the movie going. And then my, my, my biggest fear, though, is that I hope that they don't turn this into Aliens where, you know, the sequel now, we're going to have more people going down below and we're yeah. going to have firepower and more, more you know, monsters and, like, all of a sudden, like, you know, yeah, like... Yeah, I don't, I don't see what they could do besides that, yeah. really. Because it's, 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 I mean, the whole thing, there's monsters in a cave. Yeah. So unless you're going to have the monsters come out of the cave and, I don't know infiltrate an apartment building or something which is just ridiculous you know yeah. what else can you do except have more people go into the cave so it's just kind of like what's the point I guess but at least in Aliens you know in Alien there was the one monster uh, yeah you know what I mean and so it just kind of got amped up and it really worked in the sequel but for this uh, yeah I don't know uh, yeah, is there going to be one that's like 30 feet tall laying eggs down yeah. there I don't know Exactly. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I just, you know, I'm hoping that it's good. I'm hoping that it can live up to something yeah. that the original was. Because the original really did take me uh, by surprise. Because, like you said, I mean, nothing really happens for the first 45 minutes. It's just kind of like you get this feeling of dread. Obviously, what happens in the in the first couple of minutes is a hor- you know, it's horrible. Um, yeah. But you have this feeling of dread just kind of just always there, always there. These things that you think are going on that wind up getting, you know, you have these different storylines that come out down, you know, down down the road of the movie, and yeah, it's just it's so so well done, and it's yeah. one of those movies where you're like, God, I wish I wish more movies were made like this. It's like when I when when you know you read like when I've read Stephen King's stories, and it's like, God, you know, he he's so underrated as far as I'm concerned, as far as just being a writer goes, because I think he's looked at like this horror writer, and it's like here's a guy who made who writes these stories where it's like it doesn't have to be supernatural it doesn't have to be horror it could be straight yeah. up you know drama yep character studies are amazing so yeah it's I hope The Descent 2 can live up to some of the expectations yeah that's why I'm trying not to have any yeah you know I secretly do I'm trying to just be like well whatever take it or leave it yeah because then I hope it blows me away but yeah now on Wednesdays uh, that's when your blog comes out on uh, amctv.com right Yes. Yeah. And you've had some really interesting um, uh, blogs. Uh, just just a couple of, of recent ones. Uh, <laughs> you came up with the ten reasons why Phantasm ruled. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a good one. The thankless task of playing an evil sidekick. <laughs> it is thankless. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the ten worst horror movie taglines ever. Yeah. I mean, those are some great stuff. And, and if anybody wants to read them, go to amctv.com uh, to, to find those. Where do you come up with the subjects for your blog? Oh, man, it's so hard. It's really hard. Because the, the, the good thing about writing for my own website is I can do whatever I want, and no one's telling me I can't do it. Mm-hmm. So if I just want to put up a picture of, you know, like I did a, um, a post on Final Girl one day about the best horror movie mustaches. Or something, and it was just pictures of guys with mustaches from horror movies. Yeah, like I can do that and get away with it. Whereas AMC kind of has, they have these like standards <laughs> where they want me to like write good stuff, I guess, or you know, attempt to write good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they'll say, okay, you know, we need your topics for the next month, and I just like, oh my god, I'm I'm usually so spur of the moment. So I just kind of go through. Um, what the channel is showing, okay. what's coming up in the month, or I go through and check out the upcoming releases on DVD and things like that. And usually that acts as some kind of a springboard uh-huh. for me to talk about stuff, but thinking of stuff is hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sure there are people out there that are like, oh, what's the difficulty? You know, uh, you know, horror fans, I'm sure, are thinking, oh, you just come up with, you know, and they'll rattle off 90,000 topics. But yeah. number one, it is different when you actually have to, like, create something that people can read and be entertained by. Yeah. Um, and two, I mean, you are doing a lot of different things, and it's like you're kind of, you know one minute you're cutting Ludlow, the next minute you're writing for your blog, you're writing for AMC, you're, you know, writing for Rue Morgue. A lot of deadlines. A lot of deadlines, yeah. I think my brain shuts down every once in a while. I kind of just, 
it gets overloaded, and then all I can do is, like, stare at the ground. <laughs> and that's it. And then I come back, and I'm fine. But I just, I can't help it. You know, I just get overwhelmed, and I'm like, okay, yeah. bye-bye. Yeah. And that's it. I'm done. Stacy's gone away for a while. She'll be yeah. back soon. <laughs> exactly. I'll get back to you. Um, but it is kind of hard. It's, it's What's most difficult for me, I think, is writing for... Uh, for for Rue Morgan AMC because it is different than writing for my own site. You know, I have editors, I have different styles. Like Final Girl is very, while I don't really delve into my personal life, it's mm-hmm. very first person. Um, you know, I use subjective all the time. It's it's very much, for lack of a better term, it's a very Stacy flavored. And you know, Rue Morg likes me, but they don't want Stacy flavored articles. Okay. So yeah. I have to kind of tone it down, and I find it difficult to do that. Uh, but I'm learning. And like I said, I never intended to be a writer, so it's, you know, I'm really learning as I go. Well, wow. you've done a hell of a job, I'll tell you. <laughs> Jeez. One of my, one of my, um, uh, one of my favorite one of my pieces on your website is um, Awesome Movie Poster Fridays. <laughs> yeah, people really like that. Where do you find them? Which kind of surprises me. I just spend a lot of time on the Internet looking for them. I spent a lot of time in the internet. You do a hell of a job because I got to tell you, I mean, there there are some great posters that you find. Yeah, I try to just, you know, I I pick a theme each week, um, a subject matter like Evil Dead movie posters, and then I just try to find every Evil Dead poster I can possibly find in every language from every country, every variation you've heard, uh, you've ever seen. It's uh, I never expected people to respond to that as well as they have, but people really like it, so. And I like I like it because it's about yes I did one or two editions about crappy movie posters, but what were some of, what were some of your crappy movie posters? Well, the crappy movie poster phase I think I mean most movie posters are crappy nowadays. Yeah. Um, because they're just Photoshop messes. They're just getting away from these beautiful pieces of art that were very evocative and very much tried to set the mood before you even stepped into the theater. Um, now it's just Photoshopped crap. It doesn't, sometimes it doesn't even make sense. You know, oh, she's got a mouth instead of an eyeball. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> you know, and I think it all, most of it started with Scream, um, which is when the people who were in the horror movie kind uh-huh. of became more important than the movie itself. Like they were hiring yeah. well known actors to do it. And so the poster became headshots of all these well-known actors and that was it like scream should have had a kick-ass poster i think scream is a great film and the poster really should have yeah you tried know to capture that, and it doesn't yeah I, I never thought about that yeah you're right i mean it should have had either the killer on there or so yeah yeah i mean something something instead it was like here's nev campbell and yeah. david arquette yay <laughs> and from there it just kind of like everybody started doing that so it's, you know, Final Destination and Urban Legend and I Know What You Did Last Summer and all these movies are just, like, pictures of people who were on the WB yeah. at the time. <laughs> and that's it. And yeah. It's not really exciting. No, it's not. It really isn't. I mean, you, um, yeah, gosh, I miss the old days of, of, of art, of art, yeah. you know, uh, uh, drawing and even even just cartoons and stuff. It's, it's, it is a lost art, that's for sure. Yeah. And computers aren't helping matters much because it is. It's real easy. It's just like, okay, drag a couple of images together. There you go. Done. Yeah. And no one really cares. And it, it's just they're not lasting sort of works of art anymore. I think one of the only recent films that's really tried to do that is The Strangers mm. had a great poster mm-hmm. that was very retro Yeah, um, and all of that. But otherwise, it's just... You know, it's you interesting know? because you think about like a lot of the movies of the 70s and 80s that are being remade. You would think that some of that would have come back as well, you'd think. Because, I mean, you see it with, um, well, certainly with Grindhouse. I mean, they did a great job of, of yeah. trying to make those retro. And, yeah. and, of course, with the filmmakers, obviously, you know, they're very big in the, in, into that time period. So they have a lot of influence on that. But I'm really surprised that, you know, they, the studios wouldn't try to maybe capitalize on that. Yeah. Well, even w- when they re-release these films on DVD, they're changing the covers. Yeah, I know. You know, like um, Scarecrows and The Burning and some of these movies that have just been re-released after 25 years. Instead of using the original art, which was fantastic, they're using the crappy Photoshop stuff. Yeah. 
and it just looks lousy. Yeah, it reminds it, me. Uh, I'm sorry. It just. It, oh, just no, no. it reminds me of the Creatures of the Night album, the Kiss album, when they re-released it with the band without their makeup, and it's like. Yeah. Uh, what? What? I. I that, yeah, what? And then you know, they finally, you know, released it as it was, and it's just like, my God, why? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know why. That decision. Yeah. I, it, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't... That's what I don't understand. I mean, I realize that, you know, the suits aren't necessarily horror fans and all of that, but there's got to be somewhere along the line, there's got to be somebody who gets it and is going to kind of know what people have been hungering to see rather than just the same old stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, what was it? Um, <clears throat> which film is... Uh, Night of the Creeps is, uh, is being, you know, released now on DVD yeah. finally and I cannot remember which website it was I, it's it's one of the major you know one of the major horror websites um, I'm pretty sure but I guess the, the, the company's doing a um, which which of these Night of the Creeps you know DVD covers do you like and vote on it and uh, the website was like these all suck because these aren't any of the original, you know, posters. Yeah. And why are they doing new, you know, new, new, uh, new cover for this? And it's just terrible. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. If it's worth re-releasing, then it might be worth using the image that all the people who saw it the first time are going to remember. You know, and just I understand they want to capture a new audience and all of that, but you know. It worked the first time. Why isn't it working the second time? Yeah. Well, Ugh. you know, here's something scary. One of my guests a few months ago was telling me that uh, he's learning that um, a lot of uh, the younger kids nowadays don't even want to watch black and white movies, let alone even silent movies. Oh. So, you know, pretty soon we're going to start seeing, you know, all those films get lost now because kids, you know, don't want to watch black and white movies. Yeah. Which is just kids shocking. Are jerks. <laughs> Just, you know, it just shocks me. It's like, what, ha what happened? Yeah. You know, it's like, my gosh. I don't know. Well, I remember I interviewed uh, Marilyn Burns from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh -huh. um, a while back. I got to interview her, and she was telling me about watching the original movie with her niece, who had seen the remake. Um, and she said her niece was completely unimpressed with the original and just thought it was slow and boring. Wow. And there wasn't anything going on, and, you know. Wow. So That's... I guess these, these kids today... Yeah, well, you know, if th something's not happening every three minutes, you know, yeah. it's... Uh... Yeah. They're not, the kids aren't going to like Ludlow, i got to say. <laughs> well, screw them, then. <laughs> screw those kids. <laughs> they can take their rap music and their exactly. rock and roll and go away. <laughs> it's like, we don't want you, then. Go yeah. away. Get out of my garden. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> well, speaking of Ludlow, if anybody out there is interested in uh, learning more about Ludlow, seeing the trailer for Ludlow, contributing money to Ludlow so they can get their name uh, on the credits as well where can they go to do so uh they can just head over to final girl uh, our website if you google final girl it comes up uh but it is finalgirl.blogspot.com uh finalgirl.com actually there's a lot of boobs on it i don't know if it's a porn site <laughs> or what it is but somebody was looking for like a pr person it's like i tried to find your website and it was pornographic and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so make sure you put that blog spot in there unless you're into boobs in which case you know, then go you, for it. Yeah, then you found but the right place. It's not going to help me <laughs> to spend all your time looking at boobs. Um, <laughs> but if you just go to Final Girl, over on the right-hand side, there's all kinds of Ludlow information. There's a link to PayPal. Um, there's links to all of my Ludlow posts, which have the trailer and a clip and behind-the-scenes photos and screen caps and all of the nonsense that Shannon and I wrote about the making of the film and... Uh, all that kind of good stuff. So it'll be updated because, like I said, we're heading back out there next week. Awesome. Monday. We're set to resume shooting on Monday. So. Awesome. That's great. I just went, yeah, I actually drove out there yesterday um, to reserve the hotel room to make sure I had it. And uh, <laughs> I drove all the way out there. And, and I get there. Yeah. And, and the clerk said, I said, you know, I, I need to reserve a room for, like, for two nights. And she says, well, where are you going? Oh my God. I was like, what do you mean, where am I going? I'm going right here. I want to say this. She's like, no, but I mean, like, which way are you going from here? I was like, what are you talking what? about? I just want to get a hotel room. 
<laughs> well, there's cheaper hotels in other places, so why stay here? Oh, my God. So I had to explain that I shot a movie, and I was like, you know, I really need room eight, because that's the room we shot in. And she said, we're not renting out room eight right now, because there's all kinds of problems with it. Uh, I was like, what? like, the air conditioner is broken, the shower won't stop dripping, which happened during our shoot. I decided to just use the shower drip, because it did not stop dripping the whole time we were there. So I just worked it into the movie. Um, but she's like, yeah, room eight isn't available right now. So I can't even use the same room, but uh, they might let me do it anyway. You got, I, you know what? I, I think you're going to have another fun blog. I think so. I think I already do. I think I already, but I sweet talked to the uh, housekeeper, who's really nice. So I was like, can we just stay in room eight, please? And she's like, okay. She was super sweet. She remembered us from last time because I had to go outside and, and ask her, you know, I had to let her know yeah. that there were going to be, like, piles of bloody towels yeah. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> broken glass everywhere and all this other stuff. And just let her know, like, it's not real. It's all fake. I'm sorry. So we left her a nice big tip. Oh, that is um, nice. She had to clean up our mess. Oh. This is going to be good. Well, well, everybody out there, you got to 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 follow Stacy and Shannon on this quest to finish Ludlow. Go yeah. to finalgirl.blogspot.com, finalgirl.blogspot.com. Also, if you uh, Google Stacy Ponder, it'll it'll I think it's the second uh, website that comes up. Yeah. So, you know, that's where you can follow Ludlow if you're interested in donating money uh, to be an investor in the film and get your name on the credits. That's where you can go. If you want to follow Stacy uh, on uh, AMC, that's amctv.com. Her blog is every Wednesday. And, of course, her blog on Final Girl. Stacy, it was great finally having you on the show. This was a Thank blast. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. I, I will definitely have you back on the show again, especially especially when Ludlow's ready to come yeah, out. Yeah, if we survive This Ludlow. is awesome. Please send our best to Shannon. And uh, we will definitely see you. We will definitely talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thank you for having me. And as I put this interview to rest, what a great, what a great interview that, I mean, I'm not patting myself on the back for that one. Uh, I mean, Stacy's just such a great, such a great guest. <laughs> and as you can tell, we had a pretty good time talking. Um, I look forward to having Stacy back on the show. Uh, of course, as soon as we were done with that interview, it was like, when can you come back? <laughs> um, and if you have not read her, her, uh, her blog, uh, finalgirl.blogspot.com, please go there. It is awesome. It is hilarious. Her, uh, Wednesday, um, uh, her Wednesday, um, blogs on amctv.com are great. Uh, She's such a great wit, uh, talented filmmaker. Definitely check out the um, Ghostola uh, shows if you can. AfterEllen.com, I believe they're still out there. You like how I was saying Ghostella early on in that interview? It was one of those where I was like, oh, what an idiot. <laughs> and as you exit the graveyard, my friends, as always, please lock the gate behind you. We wouldn't want anyone to get out. Until next time. The Graveyard Show Podcast is a proud sponsor of the 2009 Viscera Film Festival, which celebrates and promotes progressive women filmmakers in the horror genre. Viscera is now accepting films in two categories, women-directed slash produced films and women-only productions. Submissions are open until December 31st, 2009. To find out more about the Viscera Film Festival, go to thechainsawmafia.com slash viscera for details. Good evening, friends of the undead. This is the Deacon of Darkness, the posthumous pimp, Freak Show. And I am the diva of dismemberment, mistress of the blade, June the Meat Cleaver. Myself, along with the Harlots of Horror, host the online video podcast, Bordello of Horror. Check out all the twisted fun with featured films, news, interviews, reviews, and more. 
I personally dare you to step into the bordello at MadisonHorror.com. That's MadisonHorror.com? MadisonHorror.com. Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Choose from Chainsaw Dismemberment, Nightmare 8, da da da. Satisfy your sickest fantasies. It's a trick. Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Every town has an Elvis. No more room in hell. The dead will walk here. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? Destroy the brain. St. Louis's only horror and cult movie podcast since 2007. Visit us at destroythebrainonline.com. Hi, this is Jerry's phone. He doesn't have the right cell service, so he gets no bars out here in the middle of nowhere. This camping trip isn't too bad, eh? I mean, what can you say against nature, right? So, when you called warning him about the disappearance and violent death of lots of campers up here in the mountains... What do you want? I asked the questions. He didn't get that message. I guess he and his friends will have to find out for themselves. Where are you now? I don't know. Where are you now? Um, 19 Nocturne Boulevard? (laughs) www.19nocturneboulevard.com Where are you now?